think about this as like practice or the office standing behind the ball. And then as I walk up to the ball, I'm thinking about nothing but trying to get my tempo and flow and easy, but strong. Yeah, that was a great shot. Hey guys, thanks for watching. Today on the range on Skype, I have Dr. Alan Nisipany from Idaho, University of Idaho, talking to me about the mental game. We did a video on Skype before that was just kind of like a theory video. It was actually really popular. People liked it a lot. And uh, usually mental game stuff doesn't go over that well. So I was really uh, impressed by what Dr. Allen was saying. And uh, a lot of people were asking for more information about exactly how, like beyond theory, like how would this work in practice? Okay, Alan, so if we were doing a session in person or whatever, what would you like to see first? I mean, you kind of know my game a little bit. Uh, technically, everybody has something that they're working on. For me, like you and I were talking, is I hit these pools that go left, and from a technical aspect, it's a little bit of this standing up. So uh, if somebody has an issue that they're like really is sticking to their bones and they can't get rid of, what do you have them do? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, so I went back and looked at the, you know, just a few minutes ago, looked at the El Dorado video that you posted. Yeah. And that was really cool. I, I did notice a few things. It looks like uh, at some point you had trouble with snatching the club back. Mm hmm And then it also looks like at some point you were told you had some swing plane issues and you, you paid attention to that. And then you yeah. also had this lag thing because you're you're losing your lag before you get to the ball. And so those three things I can see in your swings on the course that you're still trying not to do those things, even right. though it's probably not happening anymore. That might just be an old story that's not even true anymore, but you never got rid of that old story, right? And so now you got these swing thoughts that don't need to be there because you wouldn't do that right now. And one thing I saw a while ago, uh, is one of your early videos, like five years ago, where you were look, look doing the no turn, yeah, no turn and cast. And that was really beautiful because where, where I was seeing you get out of sync on the course, not only did you have those three anti-thoughts out there, but you're rotating your lower body in the takeaway. And so you're getting yeah, really yeah. stuck on that back leg and you have to really lunge forward to try to get, to get back to the ball. And so I think all of those are getting in your way. So my thought would be, let's just start with making it so that you don't have a single thought about those. Because when I watch your practice swing on the course, you're tracing your swing arc. You're watching your backswing, right? Like that, oh yeah, that's it, right? Yeah. And because yeah. of that, you have like 90% of your attention on your backswing, which is gonna, your body your, is gonna always follow your attention. So if your attention is on your backswing, you're gonna have a tendency to, to turn too hard and to drift too hard, and then you're gonna get stuck, and then there's no real way to get back down from there because it's too fast on the downswing. And so the first thing I wanna see is, what if we just disconnect all that stuff and that's not in your in the front of your mind yeah let's try it so let's take all the thoughts you have about the old stuff about snatching the club away I'll put all that in the bucket all the reasons mm -hmm. that that's bad news we all know that's bad news but that might be old news too mm -hmm. and then let's just chuck that one by itself <sighs> okay. okay yeah and so now think about this idea of your swing plane and what your backswing is doing. And let's just take all that thought that you've always put into that and put that into the bucket. And that idea about being across the line at the top and being under the plane on the backswing, flat on the backswing and over on the downswing, take all that and throw that away. Yeah. Right, which is what we did a little bit last week with the two plus two. Like if you learned anything with that, you don't need to hold that right in the front of your mind all the time. Yeah, it'll be there if you need it. And now this idea, what do you need to do to get lag? Let me just see what you think you need to do. Cause that could be what's creating a problem too. Uh, kind of just have a, a certain type of start to the downswing, you know? there 
then then it can whip through on its own. Right. Okay. So so your lag is really going to be a product of getting getting loaded early enough on that front foot, and then the club's just going to be behind you you at impact, right? But it, we can artificially create lag, and so. I watched one of the videos the other day where you were doing the, you had the tee, and then you're swinging over the, or hitting the tee on the backswing and swinging down over the top oh, of the Oh, yeah. 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 That was a while ago, right? But that's that whole idea of holding lag, and you're always going to be yeah. stuck there. Because yeah. that's not how you create lag. That's how you artificially create it. So let's get this whole yeah. idea about creating lag. Yeah, like there's yeah. no such thing as how to create lag. There's only the such a thing as how to get in a position where lag is inevitable. Yeah. Right. That's why there's so many arguments about creating lag. Tra lag is just a byproduct of a good biomechanical swing. But if you try to yeah. create lag, you're going to have so much tension in your swing that you're not going to be able to release the club properly. And so you're going to have to do all sorts of things to muscle through that. That's going to take away your consistency, you know, because you can't possibly do that in such a short period of time consistently. Gotcha. Like creating it or holding it or anything. Yeah, like that's that. all. That's all a dead, yeah. total dead end. It's a byproduct of getting your body in position and your arms coming through at the right time. Okay. Does that make yeah. sense? I mean, there might be a, a, a there, I, it's starting to have a suspicion that because like I was hitting seven irons in that video from a couple, like five years ago, like 190 yards, like, and with like little effort, but I was never able to bring that to the course because it was, it was so active. Like I was never able to uh, like control my start line or really like do repeat that again and again. It was almost felt kind of like a, uh, it almost felt like, like a, a trick that could convince me of something, but it wouldn't be like a way to swing, and that's why. That's I, right. Yeah, so yeah. that was the drill, right? And that was just yeah. showing you that this idea that you have to hold leg isn't true. Right, right. But it's not necessarily like like the pattern yeah, that's not for how, how you to... Swing. Yeah, yeah, you would never be able... Because as soon as, you know, that's like you'll overdose on that, and as soon as you get to the course, you'll figure out how to do that and flip. But this whole idea that I need more lag well, you do maybe, but as soon as you try to hold that angle, now you've taken control over something that should just be centrifugal force, the club swinging around in a circle. But as soon as you take control over that, you start changing the lines to these straight lines going through the ball, and you can't do that consistently. Okay, okay. Yeah, I guess. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it's just an illusion of control to, that you're, you're hoping to, I mean, I know the position I want to be in at impact, right? Yeah. So yeah, you're just having an illusion that maybe there's something I can do to make that happen rather than rather than what though? That's all that's always the thing though, you know. Cuz I do want to be moving at speed and have have the ball leave the face when this condition is happening, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You definitely want to be like that. You want to get yourself to the position where your body's through 50-50 at 9 o'clock on the backswing on the downswing, sorry. And you want to be that front foot early. So let's just take the whole idea of lag yeah, out of yeah, the lag. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I'm putting that lag, all my desires to, to have the hands that shaft lean and everything else. I'm getting rid of that, right? Yeah, exactly. So put all that in the bucket. Yeah. And check yeah. that. And now think about stand over the ball and think about the you know, just your swing. Mm -hmm. And go through your normal routine and hit one. Let's just see what that feels like. Okay, that was a pull. Okay. Now, this whole idea about loading the back leg. Mm -hmm. How do you envision, come face on there. Let me see how you load that back leg. See, that's totally different than your normal swing. Yeah, yeah. Because what you did there was you loaded, but you didn't shift your mass. Right, right. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. Because now you're already forward-ish with your mass, 
but you're loaded right. still on that back leg, you're going to be in a much better position to freely go after it. So hit one like that. Just load that back yeah. leg. Yeah, I think that's something that I do when we were talking about the uh, difference between just my um, a, a swing with no ball and then swing with a ball. I think that would be one thing that you would see different. Like when the ball's there, I'm trying to get under it. So maybe I'm, I'm going this way so that I can kind of get through it, you know, yeah, yeah, when there's I no ball. It. Yeah. So, let me. All right. So you just gave me like something physical to think of. Do I want to like take a a couple practice wins doing that yeah, and then yeah, chuck yeah. it or do I want wanna... to see what it feels like yeah so like because you were telling me there's a different way to take a golf lesson as well as far as like somebody gives you something to do is like all right do I hit shots while I'm thinking of that or do I still try it a few times and then chuck it and then see if it's unconsciously there or... yeah it's that's not... right so try that a couple times a couple practice wins so I'm actually thinking about it okay now right. I want you to to just take all that thought that you just had mm -hmm. and know that you got the feeling of loading that that back leg without drifting. Yeah, I know I got it. Yeah, right. more confident so that I got it. Yeah. Go through your body before you get ready to hit a ball. Let that feeling just go all the way through your body, loading without. Drifting. Yeah, there you go. That yeah. Feeling mm -hmm. of that, and now just step up and let go of it and hit it. Yeah, that was a good one, dead straight. I mean, to be, that was, yeah, that was a really good shot. Dead straight, very solid. Uh, to be a little critical, for a seven iron, it seemed, for an eight iron, it seemed a little high. So in my mind, I'm thinking, oh, I probably didn't have lag from like a face on point of view. It probably yeah, was flipped was, a little bit. It looked like that from, from behind too, from down the line. Yeah. Okay, so let's just do that again. The idea okay. of loading that back leg without drifting, because you know the pros will will drift no more than an inch off the ball. Right. And by the time they're hitting the ball, they're four to six inches in front of the ball. Right. Which accounts for their leg, not their arm. Yeah, I mean, when I see the the thing that I like to see when when a really good player is hitting the ball is that their hands are covering their front leg at impact, yeah. and me. I kind of get my front leg out that way and then I'm more like this. So like my hands are covering kind of my zipper and my front leg is kind of yeah. drifted this way. But that's only so, because you have to push so hard off the back to get forward in such a short period of time. Yeah. So if you're okay. more forward, right, if you're just not drifting off the ball, you're going to have all sorts of time that you didn't have before. That feeling of loading without drifting. Load, yep, yep. I'm getting more to the inside of my right leg, and it's usually like a bicycle stand or something. Yeah. Yeah, it creates a pivot. Okay. That's crispy. Yeah. Yeah. So good. So good. So when I go to actually hit a shot, so so now, this is the difference from how I've taken golf lessons before. Normally, I would try to hit a shot with that feeling, but you're saying when you go to actually hit a ball, trust that the feeling that you've just baked in is there and just kind of unconsciously hit it. Yeah, that's right. And just see what happens. Okay. So I'm kind of baking it in and then I can kind of like hit the reset button on my brain and just kind of be a little bit more athletic. Right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, just see if it's there without trying very hard at it. All right, that was all right. It's super straight, a little thin. And that one looked pretty good too. You didn't, you didn't drift, which is no. good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so much better from the front because you can't help but get lag there. Okay, so explain that connection to me so much between getting to the outside of this foot and saying drifting f four inches or so, and then and then a ending up like this at impact. What, what, what do you see as that connection, especially mentally? Yeah, so, so basically, if you drift off the ball, the only way to get back to the ball is either you lunge forward, top first, 
Yeah, like that. Or you get you try to spin from the back and throw your hands at it. Yeah. And so you lose your you have lag, but you just lose it way too early because you end up getting a little back footed. And you tend to get all the way back to the front, but there's so much there's just not enough time to lunge and turn. Oh, so that's what you mean when you say, so then I'm late. So you're late on top, you're coming through early, so you stall your turn, and then you have to throw your hands at it a little bit. It's like these four things happening. And it's all because right. you're getting back too far on your backside, and there's just not enough time in the downswing to get back forward. Okay, so something I thought we would talk about in general, I don't have the thing, oh yeah, actually I have what I want here. All right, I've been using these things called the force pedals recently that I really like. This is not a force pedal, but it's, it's a similar thing. This is like half a Nerf ball. So, cause I've been working on this a little bit on my own because there's a, like this app that kind of showed me the same thing that you were saying. If I put this, this orange half ball on the inside of my foot, right? Yeah. And, and I try to keep pressure on that the same amount, not get off of it, you know? If I try to keep pressure on that, it kind of gives me a, a real good feeling. That looks perfect. And so most people, when they're starting out using those, would put it under the wrong side. Yeah, they would put it here, here so it kind of, yeah. And what I've found about training aids from other people I've talked to, especially in the motor control world, is that you don't want things that help you. You want things that actually kind of feed the error, I think is, is what they say, yeah. So this is a good training aid for me. Talk about training aids in general, but like how, how people should be using training aids to, and then like, cause I've heard you can use them too much and it's not, I don't want to be out on the course saying like, damn, I hit the ball so good when that ball's under my foot, where, but I don't have it now, you know? Yeah, so when you use a training aid, the first thing you gotta do is if use it right. And so you, you said it perfectly, like you use it to accentuate what you're not doing correctly rather than the force you to do it correctly. And you'll be less likely to go, oh, I need that out in the course. Right, right. And then once you get that feeling of, oh, this is forcing me to kind of load but not drift, then that's when you take that feeling and let that feeling go through your body. Like that feeling that it helps you. Yeah. Yeah, because I have a pretty good feeling in my body for it now. So then you'll say like, okay, well, yeah, take, a, take a second and kind of let it sink into your your uh, bones and everything. <sighs> okay. Yeah, there you go. <sighs> that was pulled. It was super solid. That was kind of like what's usually like I've been hitting like pools that, that are like super long, but you know, like yeah, yeah. pulled way too far. So what's your tension like as you're standing there? Um, I think usually it's, it's pretty high recently. Uh, it's been feeling better. It's been, uh, um, but I think, I think there is definitely in my downswing, there is an anticipation for impact. And there's also this desire to have a certain type of impact that is getting me a little tighter as I get closer to the ball. Like, so if I'm like a, if I'm like a, a six tension here, I might be by there, like, you know, trying to do something uh, up to like a eight or nine, you know? Okay, yeah, so let's stop that for a second. Let's just grab all of that tension and all the things you're yeah. trying to do. Right. All the trying, yeah. Mm -hmm. And now let's just go to golf or your life. Think about all the pressure you put on yourself. Mm -hmm. And all the reasons for that and all the sources for that. And all the expectations. Put all those in the bucket and then chuck those. And now we know, I know we're on to something because it makes all my hair stand up. And so that's how I know that oh, that's a good one for you. And so. Then I go back and ask you about your pressure and your tension. Yeah. What does that feel like now when you think about your pressure and your tension? Yeah, it's kind of just like something that'll happen more than something that I'll be trying to do. Okay, so now yeah, let's just I see what it feels really. like. If the commitment is committing, committing to here, the chase goes there. 
So that felt almost on the other end. That felt like a little, uh, so loose that it was a little sloppy. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Especially I noticed this the other day when I was trying the, you know, the bucket stuff and being real relaxed. I was hitting my irons real good, but with driver or something that took like a lot of like kind of physical effort, it would get a little sloppy or a little, especially yeah. to the right, you know? Like you'll be a little lazy with maybe some of the stuff that should have happened. Okay, so here's what we want to do. So there's this misconception that, you know, this is like a Chinese thing, that we want relaxed tension. Okay. So that we don't want sloppy. We want perfect tension, like like strong when you want it to be strong and relaxed when you want it to be relaxed. And they can be both at the same time. So bring in that feeling of what it would feel like for you if it just felt easy, free, and strong. Easy, free, and strong. Because yeah, you're a I mean, little really. bit more like an oak tree than a willow tree. Like you're strong and then till a big storm, right? Mm -hmm. And so we right. want that supple strength. Yeah, that was a good one. When, yeah, when you say easy, free, and strong, I can definitely feel that in a um, a no ball swing. You know, that to me, that feels like if I want to be easy, free, and strong, like that feels great to me. So think about your like practice swings when somebody gives you an instruction and you only do half a practice swing and then you get right back down to the ball. Like that's just too, yeah, it's like you gotta just let that settle in first and then go after it. Well, that was a pretty bad That was a real good one. Well, the, you look so good there because you didn't drift at all. Like if you watch that on the video, you did not only did you not drift, but you got a nice turn of the hips at the right yeah. time, not early. It was just going deeper. Yeah, that one. I mean, I kind of got so mentally, guys, for everybody watching, I kind of got a feeling for what I wanted to do. And then I gave myself a second to let it sink in. And then at the same time, trusted that if it really is sunk in, it'll be there and just kind of let it go. So that that's kind of like your method, huh? Yeah, and then if it's not there, you don't try harder, you just let it go in a little deeper first. Mm -hmm. Right. Because yeah, thinking from the ball is never gonna be what gets you there. Like thinking about technique. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's interesting too, because it's not, it's not just a matter of, hey, get yourself to relax to the point of like, you know, to just maximum relaxation is the goal because then that's not really what you need for good golf shots, you know, you no, don't want to be totally... Yeah, yeah, so it's, there's a balance. It's like, know what you want to do and then have that kind of uh, more, more green energy, I would say. I don't know that's if it, right. it's kind like of like... More of a willow tree than an oak tree. Right, rather than like all this like red feeling kind of control energy it's more of this like green feeling like positive like trusted energy yeah that's perfect that was a good one real good one yeah, and so here, here's the thing though Brent, uh, Brendan it's it's like this is more about your life than your golf swing yeah and that how you control it to make it work for you because you're obviously doing lots of good stuff right but then in yeah. doing that it's exhausting and so if you can just get the flow of that a little bit better you're going to find your right amount of tension and you'll find that you can do a lot less tension and just be strong in that relaxation all right so if, as far as like if i wanted to put in especially for people watching if i wanted to put in like a uh a pre-shot routine that they could actually bring to the course, you know, especially for a lot of people, you know, they might have so many thoughts and everything that it, it would take uh, five minutes of bucketing stuff before you're actually ready to pull the trigger. I would do all of that in back of the ball. Okay, so uh, I'll just move the, move the ball up here a little bit. Okay, so I'm back here. Yeah. Because what you're saying here is this is where I'm thinking about whatever swing thought I'm working on. Mm -hmm. 
And there's, right, so, there's no business for that at the mall, right? And so you're separating the two. You're creating a physical separation. Yeah. So, so you might no be thinking about your no drifting, right? Well no so drifting for, turn. So for our purposes today, we can say like everything like that's on the mat is going to have to be a zone where there, there's no technical thinking or trying. Right. Yeah, because the only thing you're doing there is creating rhythm and flow, so your tempo. I'm getting my feel here, back here. Like, okay, Brendan, it's your turn to hit. So I'm back here and just getting kind of the feel of that right leg. Pivot on the right leg, yeah. Whatever your new term is, like pivot might be yep. good because it's better than you know, something else. Okay. Okay, so I got the feeling, so now I'm ready to walk up to the shot, right? Yeah, so now as you walk toward the ball, all you're doing Mm -hmm. Oh, beautiful shot. Really great shot. Well, you'll see it on the replay. There was so much ease in that. Yeah, I really like that because back here, I, I, this missing piece for me, I think, yeah, was that I'm getting the feeling here and then I walk in here and then I'm feeling kind of what perfect of perfect shot or perfect impact kind of feels like without really thinking about it. And then when I'm all over the wall, I give myself a second to like, just kind of like, okay, I'm, I'm really trusting it now. And that's when you're really, really kind of letting that feeling sink into you, but it's also like you're relaxing at the same time yeah, of building you, up that good you stuff. Are super like, uh, super sensitive, right? So you were like, I need more green energy than red energy, which for you is exactly right. It's just like that feeling of, of strong and bendy is good for you. That green energy is so much better. And so you're just going flow when you get up to the ball. I think about this as like practice or the office standing behind the ball. And then as I walk up to the ball, I'm thinking about nothing but trying to get my tempo and flow and easy but strong. Oh, that's interesting. So that's like, so back here, this is like the, the planning stage, the office, kind of like the headquarters or whatever. And here is really just like a factory or just kind of like, you know, kind of like a mindless area where, where good things happen, kind of. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's like going home. You know, you're going home, you just make it happen, make it happen. Yeah, my hands bowed out. Yeah, that was a great shot. So as soon as you start thinking and controlling, you lose all of the centrifugal force of the of the club because your your arms take over with tension and it takes it off of that circular path and makes it this kind of weird guided path. Okay, so you so you're saying up here technically wise in here maybe maybe the only technical thing you might want to think of up there would be a little bit like, okay, what is the tempo of this swing gonna feel like? You know, cause it's like a certain distance. So like, so let's, let's say this is a, let's say that this is an eight iron, but I'm, I'm hitting it because I got a tree and I wanna hit it low. So this, I'm gonna hit like a 75% eight iron for some reason on this shot. So I'm getting kind of my feeling here. And then up here, That's what I'm getting, kind of just a tempo. I'm just kind of relaxing and trusting that it'll be there. That was a great shot, yeah. But that's so much better for you because you step on the mat and the only thing you're worrying about is like tempo and, and it's like putting. You know, I think Dave Stockton <laughs> said like, uh, if you're going to take a practice swing, just take one. And the only thing you're focused on is getting the right distance. Like, just get one feel for how hard you need to hit it and then hit the ball. No more thinking about it. Right, right. And so your time for thinking with the swing thought or shot shape is behind the ball. And you separate that from when you're going over the ball. Then it's more about just, just that flow of what you're trying to create. I've heard before about the the think being thinking box and the play box before but um i always thought when they said that you were it was kind of like a mindlessness that would kind of send the ball in any old direction but what you're saying is is a lot more nuanced than that because because there is 
stuff for your brain to do. It's not just like an empty vacuum that, because if it's empty, anything could pop into it, right? Well, anything that you're thinking about that isn't to do with, well, how am I going to get at this distance? Like, what, it, what does it feel like to get at this distance? Uh, having flow to my swing, relaxed strength, that's all good. Right. The thing that is bad at that point is I need to remember to do this. Yeah, this is how I'm going to do that. Yeah, yeah, you're dead at that point. Right. And so some people don't stand in back of the ball. They stand off the side of it, but then they step forward into their box again. Right. Because some people, their view is better standing on the side of it rather than the back of it. Like they just feel better like that. So that's OK. But as soon as you step forward, the business the, you know, the, the, this is where you kind of get the enjoyment out of it. And all you're doing is feeling that perfect flow before you hit the ball. Oh, I love that. All right, Alan, how can people contact you? We have a website at www.resourceenergetics.com. I have my University of Idaho address, Alan N, A-L-A-N-N -N, at uidaho.edu. Okay, guys, send Alan an email. Also put it in the comments, anything that... Any questions you have or anything that you would like to see in the future? See you later, guys. Bye. What would it feel like to be able to swing at the speed of light? Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, I've, I've destroyed my machine because now it says 